Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 minute podcast. Hi everybody. Hi everybody, hi Jordan. I said a different one this morning, I say good morning everybody. Yeah you do Hi everybody today. Yeah. I was driving along the um, Willoughby Road yesterday mm. and I nearly crashed my car. <laughs> I saw this like life size, <laughs> human, massive poster of Jordan <laughs> on that's the side of the golf club. Because par just isn't good enough. Yeah, and you know what? That's, that's right. half the size of the one on the golf course. Is it? Half the size. Mate, it's your dream, isn't so, it? So, you know, I was, I was showing a client, well, sort of a client, become a bit of a friend. Um, they own, tw- uh, I won't say the address because I haven't signed it yet, but <laughs> he goes, <laughs> I showed him through a property at the Elysium and he goes, that has to be the best poster I've ever seen. He goes, all of my mates have been laughing about that all day. He goes, um... What did he say? He goes, have they whitened your teeth? I said, I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. But I've had 50 people send me a photo from the golf course beside it. Yeah. It, it some has, doing it, a wee on it. Yeah. Some <laughs> but, it, but like you do drive around looking for places to put your poster, don't you? Like you just want people to notice you. Yeah. Yeah. You just like, you just want that. What, what do you call it? That like attraction. Yeah. This Jordan Bulma. It's, it's a driver for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I like, I always, it stuck in my head when you said a couple of years ago, I just want to walk down Terrigal and like say hi to everyone and high-fiving everyone and everyone's like, there's Jordan Bulma. Like, Well, this is what I was saying to Jack, because I said I've got that lunch thing for Melbourne Cup. Yeah. I did, wasn't even organised. They've all just made me a table because like they just want me to go up there and get on the mic and just call things. Really? Because they just know if I'm there, it's going to be when a hell of a When you say they, who's at the elites or... Like all of the fun people from the area. <laughs> all the fun people. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what they call me? Belford. Belford. Yeah, well, that's all true. All of the older guys. But think about this. What's the screensaver on your on your phone on your computer? Yeah, it's not that well, I agree with everything that he Leonardo got. DiCaprio, yeah. but playing Jordan Belford on the side of the boat with a yeah. wine glass. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> think about what you're lo- moving into, though. Yeah, your, your vision's becoming a reality. Mm. Yeah, so. Well, it's sort of good. You know, yeah. It's good. Um, that sort of leads us into today what we want to talk about. And usually we just bounce things around quickly before we start. Yeah. We like to go by inspiration. We yeah. don't have any notes, nothing about whatever. But lessons mm-hmm. and changes yep. and moving forward. Like what have I learned over the years that I would have done differently? What have you learned in a short time working with me but also for yourself? And I, you know, I've learned some things from you as a, watching a young man be pretty focused on establishing himself within a reasonable amount of time. Mm. Um, so let's let's start with a few of those things because we've actually both done it in totally different ways. We have. You've and been, my you've career, been lazy. My, career's moved, <laughs> my career's moved a lot faster because I've done it in a smarter way. Yeah, you have. <laughs> but. Saying you're that. like the bike rider <laughs> that's like dro- riding along the, the road behind the truck. Yeah, and the truck's like got the draft behind it. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm it, holding and the truck yeah. for dear life with yeah, wobbles, sure. <laughs> and then the truck veers off, and I just go <laughs> past everybody else cycling. They're Jordan like, look at that guy, Tour de France, <laughs> won the Tour de France. Not, Where not, does not he even come pedaling. from? Not even yeah. pedaling, just hair blowing in the yes. wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Um, well, so I'm interested to hear this. Yeah, like what you would have done differently because. If you look at your career now, you've built one of the biggest businesses in Australia. Yeah. Franchises. Yeah. Number one agent for a number of years. Yeah. Like you've you're actually the pinnacle of real estate for Australia. So yeah. like what would you have done differently when you've you ended up sort of where you always wanted to be mm. from the beginning anyway? I think I would have um valued investing differently. Mm. Where I am now. I'm only just valuing it now, mm. whereas before, at all cost, I just wanted to become like the best I could in real estate. Mm. Didn't really care about money at all. Like I didn't think about it, didn't really earn a lot, but I wasn't, it just didn't matter. As long as mm. I could buy, I used to eat baked beans and tuna. Mm. You can ask Chris Andrews. Chris Andrews came over because I used to live with Karina's parents and Chris, because they, because we didn't have a house. So we lived at Karina's parents, Jackson's mum. And uh, for lunch every day, I used to just have a can of baked beans and a can of tuna on a piece on two pieces of toast. And Chris Andrews came over for lunch one day, who now works for us. Mm. Um, and he's uh, he's like, "What the hell is that?" 
And I'm like, I don't know. It's just like baked beans and, and um, tuna. But I, had, I just didn't care. I did, as long as I could have fuel to keep going, I just did not care. And, and just quickly, I'm going to jump in mm. because most people wouldn't know this and Chris tells this story all the time. Your concept of money was literally zero. Your yeah. first paycheck, you were, had a borrowed suit, you had no car and you were living in a caravan yeah. or whatever and your first commission check was 13000 and you said, what's that for? Yeah. And they said, for your sales for the last three months. And you said, I can't accept that. I, have, <laughs> I haven't earned it yet. Yeah, in my mind, I was just, yeah. But think about that. I get, I, Somebody I, with no money yeah. and borrowed, normally they'd be jumping at the check. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness, this is going to change my life. You're like, no, thank you. Yeah. And he went and paid, he went, I think he went back to his brother and said, that guy is mental and <laughs> paid off paid off all of your parking fines he and did. stuff from S- Sydney. He so did. even that yeah. in itself is an interesting one. Cause, yeah, because in my mind, I was only just getting started. Like I just knew the money would come um, over time. But I would have looked at investing differently. And yeah. so even with my kids now, like Jackson, I was texting Phoenix last night. So there's Jackson, Paris, Phoenix, Logan, Bay, Flora. Mm. Um, I was texting Phoenix last night and said, just start putting whatever you can into Bitcoin. Mm. You know, because I'm sort of learning more about I've learned and I'm not a like I'm not a gambler. Mm. I'm not a risk taker. Mm. I you know, I'll take it I'll back myself yeah. when it's like into other things. Like I'll take all risk on myself, but I won't take risk on oh, I hope this works out. Like yeah. poker machines, which Jackson was like addicted to at one point. <laughs> um, I just don't get the concept of them. Yeah. Like, you know, if I, if I I've been in poker machines like a couple of times. And I've put like a hundred dollars in, and it's one five hundred straight away. I just take it out and go home. Yeah, like you I do have, actually. I have, yeah, I have no interest in. But, but and saying that you're not just going there. Like it's just been times where we've been at events and things, and we've had a bit of time. To just kill. like pop in. Yeah, you just yeah. pop in for five minutes. But yeah. you, that's so true. The last time you walked in, I said, "Where are you going?" You said, "I oh, won five hundred. I'm going now." <laughs> you just left me there on my own. That's I'm it. like, "Oh, it's it." <laughs> yeah, I just I just have no interest in like the, the adrenaline of mm. gambling. So um, but I but. That's one of the things I watch with you. You're up to your third property, yeah. is it? Yeah, your third property in your 26. When do you turn 27? February. February, yeah. yeah. But so, as soon as the contract comes for this other one, that'll be four. Yeah, four. So you're up to your fourth property. And, you know, even though I give you advice around, but go slower, mm. um, but you're pretty, you know, you've got good advice around you from lots mm. of people that know, you know more than me in investing and done mm. more than that. But I probably would have got started earlier. Yeah. Even if it was a hundred dollars into because i think crypto is where the, the shift is happening right now so i would have definitely crypto didn't exist when i was yeah. younger but would have definitely bought a few more properties on mm. the way. i would have probably made my money work for me better mm. i think that's one of the things that um if i look back i probably would have tripled my wealth yeah yeah even though i'm pretty comfortable and i've got a great business and i put everything into the business it was like all eggs in one basket mm. even the home that i lived in i wasn't really interested mm. i was more like just kept building the business sort mm. of the sacrifice of other things and i don't think it would have made a huge difference if i bought one two twenty properties along the way it's amazing how the amount of money like what comes back like a 10 percent gain of thousand dollars is um a hundred and then on ten thousand oh sorry on ten thousand it's a thousand yeah and then on a hundred thousand it's ten thousand, and then on a million, it's a hundred thousand, a ten yeah. percent gain, which is quite easily get a year. Yeah, a million dollars, and you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, then you talk twos and threes. Once you're getting into the millions, your millions are just like they're just multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. Like I'm even seeing it now. It is, but it doesn't do a lot for the first ten years too. Like, and once you get a bit of money behind you, it just starts to it just starts to roll on. Like Chris Smith had said to me. He's been investing since in his 20s. He's, what, almost 40 now, and he's, I don't know what his wealth would be, 15 or 20 million. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I made the majority of my wealth in the last four years. And he said, but if I didn't have all of the stuff I put together over the last 16, I wouldn't have had that wealth to grow in the last four. And I'm like, that's (laughs) really interesting. He said, just keep investing at one point. It just goes bang. Yeah. I I think you're right. And I I think it's that, see, I've learned that, and this is not a wealth, there's no yeah. financial advice yeah. around this or anything. It's probably just what looking back what I would have done differently. But I, I think... But when saying you, that too, all, you've got a lot of wealth in a business. Yeah, I do. It's just not tangible. No, it's, that's exactly right. Like, so f- 
Chris, Chris's 20 properties and all of these people's other stuff is sitting in your one, one thing business. Yeah. See, I could have had that. And I, look, I do own some properties. Yeah. It's not like I don't own yeah. any. But I, I probably, looking at it now, I probably would have been, if I was 22 listening to this, mm. I would have taken like just a portion of my income and from now, from today, and I'd be putting it into crypto mm. for sure, mm. like without fail. Yeah. And I just make, like Jackson said, I said to Jackson the other day, you should just start investing in, in something, something that you're interested in. Yeah. He said, well, can you just take it from my pay and put it straight in? And that's the key. Mm. I think when you don't see it, you don't notice it and your yeah. life adjusts around it. You, live, yeah. you don't live on much. You live on what, a few hundred bucks a week or something. No, yeah, nothing. Yeah. I invest minimum half of what I earn every time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, and over the years, you know, I've, I've earned like really good money at times. And yeah. there's also been times when we haven't because we've yeah. been, you know, the market's no good and just had to try and survive and all of that. But it's in those times when I probably could have been a bit smarter with the money, mm. you know. Um, not that I've been excessive or anything, but like, for instance, I bought an E500 Merc when I was 28 years old. Mm. I should have bought a you know, a $20,000 car and had the, the rest yeah. work for me. Like now, even now I, I rang up Jamie, my business partner, we've been business for about 25 years together. And um, I said, oh, I don't mind the, the new Audi Q8s, is it? Yeah. Like the, they look pretty mean and chunky. And he said to me, do you really want to pay a thousand bucks extra for a car mm. a month? Mm. And I was like, no, I don't actually. But isn't that interesting that he says that? Like me looking at you, you couldn't spend – if you retired now and, and liquidised all of your assets, you yeah. couldn't spend that in the rest of no, your well life. No, well, I can buy it just outright. That's what but I mean. it's like, But the, the thing is, like, is it worth – yeah. like, why? Like, yeah. It's really about it, the, it's the exactly why. why. Like, why? So people get – I walk out, get out of the car and people go, oh, that's a nice car, what, for the first five minutes? And then – Yeah. But why? Yeah. Whereas, like, like the Land Cruiser is, like, a really good option. I, I like the Land Cruiser. Mm. So I think find something that you're interested in in investing, mm. whether it's properties or – I don't think there's any right or wrong, and just make your money work for you there. Mm. And um, the, other, the other thing I would have done differently is personal promotion. Mm. Yeah, like, I think I did an okay job at it, mm. but I was a bit like – the best campaign I ever did was the Who Is Matt Steinway one. Yeah. And that was fantastic. But I, I could have probably built on that a lot. I did it and I'll be like, you know, because I'm a bit of like, I don't beat my chest and I don't run around going, woo, like, mm. you know, that's more your style. Mm. But I probably could have been a bit more mm. like that. And I probably said no to a lot of opportunities that I should have said yes to, like mm. whether they're speaking or whatever else. But just a bit of that courage mm. around it, I think that would have been. It was the po it's the polar opposite to who you are. It is. But it's, it, it is sort of an necessary to build a personal brand at the same time yeah it is and i like i i think i like doing things when they feel right like yeah. so like now i don't mind talking to people and i don't mind doing that because i feel like i've got quite a bit to share mm. and whereas before i felt like i was a bit like i felt a bit fake because mm. i'd i'd be you know like either promoting myself trying to be that person mm. rather than now i am that person and i can that's the one thing that I would do differently, personally. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's the trap that everybody gets caught well, tell in. Tell us about it. Oh, well, I think when I first started in real estate, I was just, in my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be the best at this. Yeah. And I started screaming it from the rooftop from, like, day one. And everybody's like, what the hell? Who even is this person? He hasn't even done anything. He's like, <laughs> We've all been in real estate for 25 years, and he's just yelling from the top of the mountains. And I turned everybody, well, off, because it's a bit like, had no runs on the board. But now I don't. But, but how would you how would you see that differently? Because I, I would put the runs on the board first. Yeah, like straight away, my main goal would be yeah, build a personal brand, talk about results, but like not in the yuck way that agents do it now. Like like left side of Womberall, three bedroom, red bath, seven hundred four square meter block record. Yeah, like I just wouldn't like that's that has no interest to me anymore. Mm. Like I'm more like want to get a cool photo of me on the microphone talking about yeah. the horses with a gr great community behind having a good time or like the golf course and things like that. More stuff that people go, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Not like, like well, promote I, in a more tasteful way, I well, think. Well, I think with a golf course, it, that's that's like a Jordan Bulmer Cup. Like that's a, that's now that's like a, are you putting on an event still? Yeah. Yeah, so you're going to have prize money and you're going to have an event. And saying that too, I, I earned my space down there. I've been yeah. playing the golf there for a number of years. I always in my nature, 
take time to talk to people. Mm. I'll be like, hey, Jerry, how's your golf? You got a new bag? Like, most of the people down there know me now because I'm, without just doing it for business, I actually get interested in well, who are these people and what are they doing? Like, I'm very good friends with the people that own the pro shop. So I earned that space a little bit. Like, yeah. Do you well, know you, what I mean? You felt connected to I it. I felt for connected a reason. to it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're it's not like, just going in there chucking money at it and, and hoping people exist exactly. their house with you. Exactly. Yeah. I can see that being a real long term um, long term thing. Whereas I did it. Yeah. I did in the bowling club there, same thing, same yeah. venue. I did the Matt Steinway Cup, but I wouldn't go to do the awards because I was too shy. Yeah. So like I'd just not turn up. Yeah, and they'd give people would like whoever was in my team at the time would have to go give the prize money out. I shouldn't have done that. You should have went because well or not done it. Either do it or not do it. Yeah, like in or out. Yeah, um, yeah, and and I think um, I think the less some of the lessons over the years as well with time. Like I, I think I was in a real rush mm. to get somewhere. Mm. Like I was in a real rush to be, even though I wanted my results to be quickish. I was a bit anxious. Mm. Like I would actually give myself anxiety mm. around I should be here or I want to be here rather than just being really great at building my brand or building, mm. you know, the results in work. Like I, you can't yeah. – you sort of want them to go quicker inside but you can't make them go quicker. Yeah. Like you can work really hard and you can do all that, which I did, um, but it, it was like I was really – like my hands used to be so sweaty – like yeah. I'd be like, you know, with when I'm with people because I'd always be so anxious around oh. what they thought of me. Yeah. Or I feel a bit like that now. Yeah. I wonder why that is. Well, I, I actually think most of my better friends are a bit older than me, so I compare my life to theirs, and I just I forget that I'm 26 sometimes. Like, did you do that? Yeah. Because all, I know all of your like best clients and friends now; they're all a bit older than you. Like yeah. so, I can imagine what they would have been doing when you were thirty and they were forty-five. Like they would have been very, very successful people at the time. Or is it just a personal thing for you? Well, I've really come to realize that people don't really care. Like, if you people don't really care, like, like what you know, what you're worth, or they really just care about the moment. Yeah. Like, are you present with them? Are you helping them? Yeah. Are you all of that? Like, they don't really care about if you're number one or not mm. like that's more of like a self mm. achieving thing mm. and I always used to be so desperate to prove myself to people mm. probably because I had an in a deficiency inside of me like an yeah. insecurity yeah whereas I, I probably should have enjoyed it a bit more like mm. enjoyed the process of building because mm. here I am now at, you know just almost 50 and I'm like you know did I really enjoy the yeah, or the building of it all. Or did we just head down and yeah. blink and now you're 50 and you're like, oh, what happened? I was, I was like literally, I didn't enjoy anything. Like when Jackson and the kids were young, I didn't enjoy anything to do with their life. Like I, I was there, but sort of not there at the same time. But even saying that too, like mm. you wouldn't have been easy to work with. Terrible. Either. Like Terrible. I remember when I first started, you were very difficult to work with. Because I wasn't happy. Yeah. But now you're the best. Yeah. And we've done double the numbers. Yeah, that's right. Bizarre. I, Your and family's I, connected. Yeah. Your business is better than ever. You're the happiest you've ever been. Yeah. And numbers are double. And you're like a bit more relaxed about it all. Yeah. And I, I think I used to get so worked up inside. People may not have known around me, but if things didn't pan out right, so if mm. someone didn't list with you or someone, you know, sale didn't happen, mm. I used to, it used to really affect me, like massively. Like I'd be like almost just that the whole day is gone. Yeah. Whereas now, like, I mean, you lost a listing the other day and, you know, I could have been like, oh, but I'm like, well, let's have a look at what the sequence you did. Was there anything that you missed in that sequence? Yeah. So it's really like a good learning moment. And you like, and oh, you said, well, I can see the gaps. Yeah. And, and I could too at the time. Yeah. And whether you listed it or not, in the, you know, if you did that, who knows? Yeah. But it's all about giving it your best shot and you can't do any more than that. Mm. But then your job is to understand what the best shot looks like. Yeah. So I probably would have like, come up with it does amaze me there's actually really good secrets in real estate out there mm. of successful people what they do and mm. things a lot of it is smokes and mirrors by the way mm. and this isn't just real estate but i think it's all sales all business you might think yeah, of life business instagram life. yeah life. and yeah someone or a friend of mine's driving he drives a or oh, the best merc whatever it is and he's got no money mm. you know like it all of that is like 
you know, it's not what you think sometimes. Mm. So, like, even well, we use real estate because we're in it, but these people that post all their results and all this sort of stuff and it's like, yeah, okay, great, you, you sell 20 properties a month or 30 or whatever it's going to be. But what I think now is, do you do a great job? Mm. Like, do you do a really – and I think I would have focused more on that. Mm. I would have focused on – because I used to just be hanging on for grim – death like mm. just be like oh because and hating the every day like mm. hating it mm. like i was just empty inside phone was just going crazy and it was like and i, I knew i wasn't really doing a great job i mm. sort of was mm. sometimes but mm. I'd, I'd be like exhausted inside yeah you know instead of saying well you can't just pick the number of clients but almost be like if you're going to deal with someone do an amazing job and then that will lead to another one and another one and if it took two years longer, like, does it really matter? Mm. Yeah, so... And that's what I've found too. I, I actually think that multiplies faster. Yeah, it does. Doing good jobs with people. Yeah. Like, you still got to prospect, you still got to build yeah. momentum. But it, it's like I used to be all about the new business coming on and leave a path of destruction behind me. Mm. And everyone thought you were amazing because you're doing... You're number one. You know, that's what I mean about the facade. Yeah. You know, and I genuinely did care... But, you know, sometimes I'd sit in front of people and just say, look, because um, I'd stuffed up so badly because I just wouldn't give them – this is years ago. Mm. I was just – had so – I was so swamped by mm. what I created mm. that I, like, was hating it and I'd be dropping the ball everywhere and I had all these young people doing mm. all these things with me, you know, and when, when I mean – but you're young but you're, like, a serious business person. Mm. I'd have literally people just in their hole just to try and juggle all the <laughs> things, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds yeah. – just go and show this property, show that property, like barking orders at them all day, absolutely hating my life. And I just have to go sit in front of people, just say, look, I totally stuffed up. I'm sorry. I just, yeah. And just then you'd get a call like, hey, Matt, can you come and speak to us about yeah, like yeah. your successful team and being the number one? And yeah. you, I, I remember you used to come out and say, oh, I can't do that anymore until yeah. we sort this out. It's <laughs> fake. It's fake. Yeah, yeah it, it's really fake. But so it's good that... Nobody would speak out about this sort of stuff. Mm. Like you're like full on. It's like yeah, yeah. My business five years ago was an absolute train wreck. Yeah, we yeah. were number one, but my goodness, I was unhappy. I was this, I was that. I haven't heard another real estate agent in in the country actually let people into their lives in a real way. Yeah, it's just it's that facade, and that's it. Yeah, like you never actually know what's going on behind closed doors. But with you, you're like open book. Yeah, you're like a book that's just on on a bus stop and says please read me and just leave me here yeah like, there's there's nothing to hide no there's not i think it's better that way yeah but i think if we look look at those lessons though and convert them around so if you're a younger person trying to get into real estate or in real estate or in a sales job i think personal brand is very important mm. I, I would i would definitely i would definitely be um uh what do you call it um like film it like um the journey documenting. like documenting yeah. yeah that's it documenting the journey like yeah. i would definitely be documenting the journey not mm. not labor intensive vlogs or anything like that yeah i just think record where you're up to and more about like what you're learning and what you're doing like bring people along on a bit of a journey with mm. you you can put your successes up there if you listed a house and you sold a house and things like that but with the power of these platforms now yeah um i think that documenting your journey just a bit like you know, maybe once a day or, you know, mm. a few nice photos and things like that is, is going to be very helpful down the track. Yeah. Because as you get where you're up to, so you did it the other way. You were trying to use a megaphone yeah. to say to people, this is where I'm going. Yeah. You know, and this is what I'm achieved. Like, actually, this is what I'm achieving. I'm, you know, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And you're shouting at them and it was really polarising people. Yeah. But now you're more interested in, like... It's almost like engaging with people. Yeah, you're, you're more interested in engaging with people, which is working really well. Yeah, yeah. So, and I might post a, like a good result. Here yeah, a good result. There, yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, that's right. But there's less to prove it, the better you get to. Yeah, there I is. Think. It's like wealthy people never talk about money. Yeah, and the people who really don't, they just love telling you how much money they've got. <laughs> so it's like it's like good indication of you know what's actually real. Um, but I, I would definitely be doing that. And personal brand is good for, for everything too. Like if yeah. you build a personal brand, you've got avenues for everything then. You do. I think heading into this age, we've got a friend, Bryce, yeah. that we talk to a lot and he does a lot of research. 
around branding, marketing, things, whatever. And he's actually right. He said, we're, we're moving into the era of personal brand is everything. Mm. So personal brand is the reason people will use you. Personal brand is the people, the reason people will trust you. Yeah. And it's also the thing that will stay steady when the markets change. And I think it'll be the reason that people will keep using you. Yeah. So um, those, if people are listening to this now, like I, I would have been, I'd, I'd, I don't know, what's your thoughts on advertising agencies? I'm going to share my thoughts, but what's your thoughts on getting advice around? I think, I think it's good if, if you don't know what you're doing. Like we use IMI because I, I know the space really well, not, I can't keep up with it as fast as if I was working in it every day, but I've got a pretty good understanding about well, all this of is that. Good. Let me ask you something here, yeah. right? So you have a digital marketing degree. You're, yeah. you're pretty – if you look at our team, you're the guy that everyone goes to to say, hey, you know, yeah. what do we do here? What do we yeah. do there? Blah, blah, blah. And you're right in that space age-wise. Mm. So mm. you're in the perfect vortex yeah. for that. But we still outsource – to Immy, yeah, who's phenomenal, the best. Um, the yeah. best. I don't think she takes any on, on any more clients, but she is phenomenal. Mm. Um, we still outsource to an expert in that area. T- tell us, mm. like you could easily do some of that, mm. but you you like oh, and even I, your I, own stuff, like every real estate agent. I'm not a mm. marketing director. That's how I see it. Like I, I need to spend as much time as possible meeting people in our area, dollar productive stuff. It takes a long time. Like we, we come up with ideas on creating content, but imagine me putting ads and things on. It takes hours. So, so as a young person who's just getting started, yeah. And when I say young person, I could be fifty just getting into this business. Yeah. So when I say young person, just youngish in their their arc of their timeline of career, mm. should they use someone like Emmy straight away, or should they get some advice first and then learn a bit themselves? I and think then, it's number one. If yeah. you just door knocked. Yeah, door knocked and owned the online space. That's all you'd need to do. Yeah, okay. I think. Mm. Well, no, look, I agree. I've got two phones here. You've I got agree. one. Yeah, Everybody, no, I agree. I don't even turn the TV on anymore. Yeah, like the world's changed. It's gone to phones now. If you can create good, engaging content and get a marketing advisor or whatever to to make sure that it's hitting your market, like you need to make sure that if you're spending two hundred dollars and you're working in Womble Terrigal, that the only people that are seeing that are people that live in Womble Terrigal. Mm. These ads that I see on Facebook and Instagram from agents in Queensland, they're just burning money. They should have just put it on the table and burnt the thing. Mm. Like for the So, sa- so for the have sake, a highly targeted, it has to be, consistent it? marketing approach. What's the point of somebody in Queensland seeing my ad? So what's your thoughts on these, um, well, I've got you, on these market wraps things that everyone no does? Okay. They make no sense. The only way that a market wrap would make sense, if I created a private video on Facebook and said, hey, guys, this is what's happening in the Womble Marketplace, it was interesting and it was engaging and it only went to the Womble Marketplace. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I target it and it just went to the Womble Marketplace, I think there's a better way to do it. It should be like a cool monthly recap, like this sold, that, this, mm. that. Mm. 60 seconds, fast, high energy about what's happened in the Womble Marketplace over the last month. And it just goes to the Womble Marketplace. Mm. Me going, hi guys, this is my Saturday market wrap with people all over the coast seeing it and I'm only talking about sales in Womble. It's not relevant. Mm. It's like me selling baby clothes to Jackson. He doesn't mm. have a baby. Mm. He's like, why am I seeing this? Yeah, right. So it actually, it, you lose credibility. Because mm. it's like, oh, it's that guy yelling at me about something that doesn't even interest me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, do, you, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's why I'm asking. Like, yeah. it's really your space. Like, I, you know, I, I know a bit the about it. The information has to be relevant to your marketplace. Yeah, okay. That's it. And consistent. So, so with, you said before, door knocking and online space. Yeah. So if you're a young agent... Yeah. You, you, that's what you should be focusing if on. If I was a young agent, I'd had 20 buyers that can transact today. Mm. And you know I speak to mine all the time. I text them. I've got nothing for you. I'm just yeah. saying hello. 20 yeah. buyers, the hot list that we were talking about yesterday that Chauncey has, 150 clients, door knock for two hours a day and own the online space. Mm. That's what okay, you need to good. do. Mm. So, all right, other lessons that um, I have seen. We've actually we just saw one this morning. Mm. Um, changing yeah so changing I, I reckon the biggest mistake people make in this business is hopping around offices hopping around here there everywhere looking for this 
I'll run for five extra percent split here. I'll do this. I'll do that. La mm. la la. I was actually with someone yesterday talking about McGrath, mm. and and I said to them, "You couldn't pay me enough to go work somewhere else. Like you could, even if they said here's ten officers and ten billion dollars. Oh well, there's no way I would go." work somewhere else apart from McGraw because I, I love the energy of John. Mm. I love what he's created. I love the brand. I love everything about it. And go back to the money thing. Yeah. I didn't even think about the money. Like yeah. I've never thought about the money in my career. I, I like money. Like mm. I like to be able to do stuff. Mm. But it's just not top of mind. And I find that people who chase the money are usually the ones who are not the best to work with. Yeah. Do you, do you get what I yeah. mean? And I was talking to this other agent yesterday and we're just talking about stuff and and uh, this changing, how exhausting. Yeah. You know, like... But how often do we see it? Changing companies and changing here. I, like, I get it. Like, in the early part of my career, I changed a couple of times, but I found... You know, no, you I, outgrew the companies. I did, yeah. I didn't actually, change. I, I did, yeah. I, I think you can make it in any company as long as you like where you are. Like, as long as you like the people and you like the... It's not always going to be fantastic. Like mm. some days I just want to work from home and not go anywhere. Mm. But it, it's like you've got to – I think you make your career. I think mm. there's like staying in your lane. We talk about that a lot. But, yeah. but I think there's a lot of power in that. You know, in, we were talking about someone this morning mm. and imagine they stayed in their lane. Yeah. They, they would be a thousand times in front of where they're up to at the moment. Yeah. You know, like it's really intrigues Why me. Why do you think people – not just change. I, we we know why people change businesses because they look for that little silver bullet for one minute. Yeah. But why do people change careers all the time? Do you think because they, it just doesn't click with them? Or like I'm lucky that I I started real estate and went, yep, this is me. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't get that, but I, I'm a big believer that like if you don't love what you're doing, what's the point? Yeah. Like maybe you should jump around and see what you like. I think so. But I think when you're young, you got you got to find something that clicks. Because you've got to get up and, get, and have a bit of energy about what you it's do. It's hard to be successful at something that you hate doing. Yeah, for sure. It's like selling a house that I don't like. I just can't do it. Yeah. Like, people know I can't do it. Like, I just, mm. even when I go to a listing presentation, I'm just not, not interested. Mm. But when, when you have something that's like Jackson at the moment, he's, he's been to a few things, but he's, mm. his talent's in photography, filming, and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah. And now he's loving life, but he's went round and round in circles trying to find it again. But let's say you get into real estate and... I think when, when your focus is um, like these agents that leave chasing a bigger split, for instance, mm. I think that's, that's – I understand all that. But you would be it, – it's time. It's mm. time is where the, the real return is. Yeah. It's not, you know, how much you get here. It's what sort of career you build down here. Mm. I think that's the key because – whether I earn fifty percent, sixty percent, or seventy percent, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Like it, it's irrelevant in a way because mm. the momentum that you, I think that's where the real exchange yeah. is. The momentum that you build needs to be that fierce that you're riding like exponential amounts every year yeah. because you've created something that's people can't keep up with for sure. And I, I always think like. What edge does this company give me? Yeah. That's the most important thing yeah. to me. Like uh, we've seen all the people that have left to go to boutique or one business yeah. companies on the whole coast that have not really a connection to Sydney, not great tools, all this sort of stuff for an extra 10%. Yeah. I'm telling you, we would beat them when we say we've got six officers, we've got 100 staff that all work together. When we list your property, it goes out to all of the agents. It's yeah. not just Matt and I working for you. It's the whole Central Coast network. Plus, we've also got the connection to Sydney. And here's the database and here's the thing that they sent us saying we can send it to this many people. Yeah. Like the edge that that gives you is phenomenal than well, yeah. being a... Or you go to Ray White that are around the corner that are also compare. Um, competing with Ray White around the corner yeah. and aren't talking to the people in Sydney and, like, what a mess. Yeah. Let's hope sure. that somebody walks into their office down there. Otherwise, you're not going to have any buyers. Yeah. Like, do, do you know what I mean? Like, our company does give that edge. It gives a lot of different pieces of the puzzle to buy, to owners. I, I think it, it does. Massively. You know, not, not being biased or anything, but I, I think it does. But also, on top of that, you've got to have a formula and a system. Mm. You've got to have a formula and system. I'd want to be working with people who have formula and systems. Like, if I went to Melbourne, I would sit right next to James Tostevin. And I, if, if I was a newer agent, could get anywhere near James Tostevin, 
I wouldn't care what the company was in a way. Mm. I'd be like, I just want to learn his system. Mm. 35 years running at Australia's best level, nonstop, has seen everything. I just want to be near that guy. Mm. Like he works for a good company, Marshall White, but it's like who, I like the brand, mm. you know, but I just want to be near him. Yeah. Because when you're near that, it's like, it's like racing a, a push bike. If you're racing against a guy who you know, goes in Tour de France and is one of the leaders or mm. winners, mm. or you're racing against someone in high school who is a good rider, yeah. you're naturally going to get better yeah. just by being near this peak rider every day, pushing yourself, expanding your mind, expanding what's possible. You know, that's why I love John McGrath. Mm. John McGrath is a thought leader. Like, and he's actually so involved in the company too. I didn't know this. I spoke to my, my mum yesterday and she said, oh, I'm back training with John McGrath again. I went, what? She said, yeah, well, John and I are doing weekly sessions now for the next two months. John, the busiest man on the planet, is taking an hour out of his day for the next few weeks to train mum. To train your mum. Isn't that cool? It's As fantastic. a CEO of a company. I'll tell you, I'll tell you wow. another, I'll tell you, I'll read you a text. Hang on, I'll just put a, my glasses on. I'll read you a text that I just... Sent John the other day. So he goes, I said, um, uh, where is it? Well, if I look at all these texts just recently, um, he goes, I said, hey, Johnny, I've got a, I've got a um, development up here. I need a, do you know a good interior designer? He's like, yeah, I'm onto it. I'll let you know, blah, blah, blah. He sends me, emailed me straight through a couple of interior designers. Then he rings the interior design company to let them know I'm going to be calling him, blah, 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 blah. And then I send him a video or something. He goes, oh, send me some more when you can, blah, blah, blah. I just, and then this is like 30th of September. He's like, um, or just letting you know, break this record, break record. And he's like, you're so on fire. Like you're going to hit the 10 million mark. Your team is flying, so exciting! Like they're mm. they're all they're all here. Like it's like this is just the, the the one that you were saying was the Peter Chauncey one. Yeah, or well, the Peter yeah. Chauncey one. But um, and then he texted me. So I asked him about two weeks ago about helping me find a cadet. So I ring John McGrath. Said, "Mate, do you know any anyone that want to be a cadet?" Blah blah. He texts me like if I look back, there's a text in there somewhere. He goes, "Any luck finding the junior associate, Matty?" This is like 4.30 in the afternoon on Wednesday the 13th of October. Like he's following me up about a cadet. <laughs> and I write, yeah, I think I've got one. And then on the 22nd of October, hi, Johnny, my team and Chaunce are going to come down on Friday to reinvent ourselves. Can I use a room at the head office? He's like, yep, I'll organise it for you right now. Rings me up. He goes, I've got the room, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get Jess to call you, blah, blah. Like this is there a guy. There was coffees. There running, was food. There was coffees. There was food. There was everything ready. And then... After it, he goes, um, no, after it, he rings me on the next day and says, how did it go? And I was like, yeah, good. He goes, did anyone take notes? And I said, yeah, me. He goes, oh, could you mind emailing me the notes so I can have a read of them? Like, this is a guy who runs a public company <laughs> who is the, the king of real estate who's interested in my cadet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Talk about phenomenal. Yeah. That's why, like... I'm, my resonance with this brand and company mm. runs so deep because yeah. Yeah, that it's, it's is that. crazy. It's that. See how the like, you know, the split or the this or the that does, doesn't even come into it. You mm. know, it's like John McGrath is interested in getting us cupcakes for our team meeting with Chaunce and then wants to read the notes that we took <laughs> from the meeting. Can, can you see like yeah what an exciting leader yeah the, yeah the energy exchange so when i sit in somebody's home you just did it two seconds ago George, mm. when you were talking about you're pitching to me about mm. mcgrath and you mm. could see like your whole you mm. opened up and your energy expanded mm. and you're like engaged if i was an owner i'm listening to that mm. and same as with me i'm talking about mcgrath and it's coming from my heart straight to them mm. so like that thing about being a part of something i and that's how mcgrath came about all those years ago so yeah even if we look back in, in my career, I worked, 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 worked. And then I used to be like, oh, I'd really love to be part of McGraw one day somehow. But I was on the Central Coast. It wasn't even up here. And then that whole thing, I just all I did was learn to become the best that I could. And I got to speak at a seminar one day where – no, I went to a seminar one day where John McGraw was. Yeah. Somehow crossed paths. And I like the better I got, the more opportunities came. And then mm. – 
I spoke one day at a seminar that he was at and then we just became and then I went to Sanctuary Cove one day and listening to another seminar of his and we had a chat and blah blah blah. Before you know it, boom. Yeah, he was a microphone. But before you know it, the opportunity of becoming McGrath yeah. came along. Yeah. Because I was readying myself with all of this people were starting to take notice of me. Yeah. Because of what I was doing to lead up to that. And now look at it all these years later. Yeah. So I, looking back, and let's just tie this whole thing in with this, all I needed to do back then was just become the best I could be. Mm. Learn how to be the best. I, not run off to this office and that office. It didn't matter because I was like, I was learning to become the best real estate agent I physically could be. And in, in turn, somewhere along the line, it got John McGraw's attention. And then that's turned into... You know, many officers and great relationship mm. and him looking for my cadet and all yeah. of this sort of stuff, you know? So moving forward, like a, let's just end this one on moving forward. What's your plan, Jordan, moving forward from here and a young version of you, where are you headed? I'm move, moving towards my target of my 30 targets. Like yeah. 30, year, 30 years old is on the mirror at home. That's like I know my five goals, half a million dollars a year, Partner in the bigger McGrath company, ten properties, writing two and a half. And where million are dollars. you up? Where are you up to that? So half halfway. a million dollars a year. You're over oh, halfway I'm, I'm there. Halfway, you're yeah. well over halfway there. You owed four out of your ten properties. Yeah. And what? What else are there? Partner of McGrath. Yeah. That's coming. Yeah. You know that's that's happening. Of the six offices. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll o- we'll open another one soon, and we'll open another one. So you'll be partner of eight offices or yeah more by then. Yeah. Um, I, I put a, a new goal down. I want to. Finished getting my black belt. Yeah. I'm brown now. I've got one to go. That was years of training, years and years and years. And it was something that I put on my So you brown belt? Yeah. Yeah, right. But I just never – I just – work got too hard. Like I had, it had to take a back seat. But I'd like to get back to it and just finish it off because then it's done. We might do a um, vlog of him doing that. Yeah. And that was it. That's my four. That's great. That's awesome. That's a personal one. That's a fitness one. It's very, very difficult to get your black belt. It takes a lot of training. Yeah. So I'll get fit in the process as well. Fantastic. And for myself, I'm going to start investing in crypto a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty happy with everything else where we're at. I'm happy mm. with the team that we have and mm. the results that we have and obviously want to build a home soon. Mm. But I, I think if I look back, the main thing I would have done is invest differently. Yeah. Yeah. The, the rest I'm pretty pretty good with and engage more with the kids these days. But yeah, yeah so I hope people got a little bit out of it today. That's um, a good one. If there's any other questions that people want us to cover, just send them in. I don't know. How do they send them, Jack? Instagram. Instagram. Just send direct messages. We'll cover what we can. But, yeah, see you on the next one.